We're now going to look at what could go wrong at an internet exchange point. And these are generally a list of different ways that exchange point operators harm their exchange point. So let's look at the first one. And the first thing that can go wrong is the concept. Some service providers attempt to cash in on the reputation of exchange points. They market their for-profit internet transit services as internet exchange point. We are exchanging packets with other ISPs, so we're an internet exchange. So-called layer 3 exchanges are really internet transit providers, and they're using a router rather than an ethernet switch. Another thing that can go wrong is financial. Some exchanges price their IX out of the means of most providers. The whole point of an exchange point is to encourage local peering. The acceptable charging model is minimal cost recovery only. All members agree on the fees. Some exchange points charge for port traffic. Well, exchange points are not transit service. Charging for traffic puts the exchange point in competition with the members. Transit providers are much more experienced and adept at offering good quality and low-cost transit service. So the exchange point that charges for port traffic will lose. Of course, there's nothing wrong with charging different flat fees for different types of Ethernet ports, as they all have different hardware costs on the large chassis switches. Another thing that can go wrong is competition. Too many exchange points in one location. Competing exchanges defeats the whole point of the encouraged local peering exercise because it becomes expensive for ISPs to connect to all of them. So they don't or won't, and local traffic suffers, defeating the viability of the IXPs. An exchange point is not a competition, and it's not a profit-making business. In fact, most of the successful exchange points operate purely non-profit as a cooperative for the members. Other things that can go wrong include too many rules and restrictions. Exchange points try to compete with their membership, offering services that ISPs would offer their customers or provide for their customers. In reality, exchange points are operated by the members for the members. Exchange point is run as a closed privilege club. For example, very, very restrictive membership criteria. In reality, a participant needs to have an autonomous system number and their own independent address space. With that, that's all they require to join an internet exchange point. Sometimes an exchange point is located in a data center with restricted physical or transmission access. IXPs must be in a neutral location and provide a neutral interconnect with unrestricted physical and transmission access for all members. The exchange point charges for traffic. Well, so do transit providers. Charging for traffic is a sure way of ending the viability of the exchange point. IXP is providing access to end users rather than just network operators and service providers. As already mentioned, a participant at an exchange point needs to have their own address space, their own AS number, and of course, their own transit arrangements. Exchange points interfere with member business decisions. The most common error is enforcing mandatory multilateral peering. The exchange point is a layer two infrastructure designed to facilitate local peering. The exchange point has no business interfering with how members interconnect the networks over the exchange point fabric. There are also many technical design errors. Interconnected exchange points are often believed to be the solution to a lot of local internet connectivity issues. One exchange point believes it should connect directly to another exchange point in another location. It sounds nice, in principle, but then who pays for the interconnect? How is traffic metered? 
And this, of course, is going to compete with the service providers who already provide transit between the two locations, who then refuse to join the exchange point and probably encourage their customers not to join the exchange point either because they can provide a cheaper service. And this harms the viability of the exchange. Now, of course, exchange points can have multiple sites within the metro area, and this is quite common as exchange points scale and become more and more part of the critical infrastructure in the Internet. Another common error is ISPs bridging the exchange point land back to their offices. We are so poor, we can't possibly afford a router. We'll just connect the exchange point land to our office land. Well, the financial benefits of connecting to an exchange point far outweigh the cost of a router. In reality, it allows the ISP to connect any devices to the exchange point LAN, and this will have disastrous consequences for the security, integrity, and reliability of the exchange point. Another thing that can go wrong is routing design errors, where a route server is mandated, and as we've learned already, mandatory multilateral peering has no history of success. It also means that ISPs have no incentive to learn BGP, and therefore no incentive to understand peering relationships, peering policies, or how interconnects work. They become entirely dependent on the operator of the route server for all the troubleshooting, all the configuration, and the reliability of the interconnect. And remember, a route server cannot be run by committee, and this is what so often ends up happening. A route server is designed to assist with scaling, peering at exchange points. Members of exchange points need to understand peering policies and how the different peering relationships function. So summarizing all of what can go wrong, an exchange point is not a transit business. It is just a layer two switch. If charging is going to be implemented, fair cost recovery only shared equally amongst all members. It's not a competitive service. There shouldn't be any oppressive rules or restrictions. No mandatory multilateral peering. No bureaucratic management. No interconnection with other exchange points. And no bridging of the exchange point LAN back to members. And it's important to use a route server to scale the exchange point. Thank you.